In this part, let's take a look at how you modify a SharePoint 2013 master page. So um, here's a simple checklist on when you know that you need to touch the SharePoint master page. Uh, first off is you know that structures of zone needs to be changed. Uh, you're moving title or adding a search box or making sort of uh, more complex manipulations than just uh, changing the color. Uh, next one is that you're adding any custom out-of-the-box controls uh, such as navigation or breadcrumb to the page. Um, additionally, if you need to manipulate specific UI elements, like we're going to take a look at this example, uh, for, for example, the sweet bar links or, uh, or make a complicated styling of the sweet bar, for example, you, you would need to touch the master page. Um, or if you're adding a JavaScript interaction to the page, you definitely need the master page to link your uh, JavaScript interactions to the rest of the site. Um, and if your changes will be uh, uh, used on many other sites and subsites on the site, you also need to uh, work with the master page. So let's take a look at uh, what's involved in uh, modifying the master page in action. So here is uh, we have a SharePoint 2013 publishing site. And uh, this particular site, uh, if we go to uh, the gear icon, site settings, um, here uh, in the master pages and page layouts, we see the library where all of the master pages and page layouts are located. So uh, the master pages are uh, the files with extension .master. So we have oslo.master, minimal.master, and uh, several different page layouts that uh, are used on the site quite extensively. Now let's take a look at how we can actually uh, access the same location using a SharePoint designer and make some of the modifications. So I'm gonna open up my site using a SharePoint designer and uh, once the site is loaded, I'll access the master page gallery. So here's the dashboard of my site. If I click on master pages, that's a quick way for me to go to the master pages gallery and actually filter all of the files uh, that I have um, from layouts and master pages and only see my master pages. And you, as you can see in here, I have uh, several folders for uh, multilingual, con uh, multilingual um, uh, master pages, but uh, here is my generic master pages used on the site. So uh, let's take a look at uh, how we actually uh, modify or, or create our own custom look using the master page. Well, first, uh, first tip is uh, uh, copy an existing master page. Do not modify uh, the master page that you see here. Uh, the reason why is because if you modify the master page and something doesn't work, you'll never be able to reverse it back to the way it was. Um, and, and some of the potential out of the box changes will be lost. Uh, so uh, next thing is uh, to modify the master page, don't open the .master file, open the actual corresponding HTML file. So if you take a look at the preview the HTML file in the browser, uh, let's log in here. you'll be able to see a preview of the master page uh, as an HTML file. So that's a quick and easy way to open um, this file in any browser and actually see what your master page is all about and, and, and actually uh, be able to uh, interact with some of the elements and view some of the elements. You won't be able to interact with this particular page because this isn't the actual master page. But what you can do from here is right on the top here, um, you have a snippets gallery. And uh, what snippets are is if you have, if you've received a custom design uh, caught up from a design agency and uh, you would like to insert uh, SharePoint specific snippets, for example, a search box, a top navigation, you can actually pick one of those items. And here we have a, a navigation selected, the top navigation snippet. And if, uh, and if it's picked, we can actually copy and paste this markup right here and uh, paste it in, our, in, the design, um, in the design that's been cut up for us by the design agency. And that will, uh, will produce the actual uh, markup required for the, the uh, top navigation to work within the markup that was given to us, the static markup given to us by the design agency. So let's take a look at um, how we actually would go about and, uh, and creating our own master page and start modifying our, uh, or start adding our own look. So uh, first thing first, I'm gonna uh, pick the master page that I like. You know that there's some difference between Oslo HTML and Seattle HTML. Let's say I like Seattle HTML. I'll make a copy of Seattle HTML right from the uh, SharePoint designer here uh, by pressing Control C, Control V. And next, I'm gonna rename this page or this master page to custom.html and save it. And what that'll do, that'll actually create the .master file. And the .master and .html file are, are actually linked. So if you, if you start modifying the 
uh, .master file, you'll actually get a, a bit of a warning saying that you can't do that. This file has been associated with an actual HTML version of the master page, and you should be actually modifying the HTML version of the master page. And it also give you, it gives you a helpful link to a snippet gallery where you can get your snippets to build the master page. So we're going to close this file, and we're going to actually open the um, the custom.html in advanced mode right in SharePoint Designer. You can see that pretty much everything is the same, it's just the items that are uh, linked are commented and those commented items will um, automatically uh, be rendered within our master page as the page is executed. So let's take a look at what can we done on our site. Uh, what we'll do here um, is um, we'll change the sweet bar that we have on this particular site to something more elaborate and complicated. Uh, so um, here's an example of what I, uh, what I have in mind. What we'll do, we'll, we'll add a bit of a swoosh on the sweet bar and also a bit of a gradient to the rest of the sweet bar. And then uh, for those icons on the right here, on the username and the gear icon, we'll actually uh, make those um, with the rounded corners. So add a bit of a spice to our site. Um, as as uh, you may have noticed, uh, the sweet bar is broken down into several parts. Uh, there's a right side of the sweet bar, or left side of the sweet bar, and there's a right side of the sweet bar. And if we open the Firebug um, in uh, Firefox, uh, you will be actually able to see all of the various different elements that play in a sweet bar. Let's take a look at that. So in here I'm back to my site, and if I launch the uh, Firebug, you'll actually be able to see, let me select part of the element here, or part of the site, and you could see that my sweet bar is broken down into sweet bar left and sweet bar right. So sweet bar right obviously has all of the elements associated with the welcome menu, the actual uh, gear icon, help icon, etc, etc. So uh, in order for me to uh, be able to um, modify um, some of the color scheme on, on the left side of the sweet bar as well as add some of the changes on the right side of the sweet bar, what I'll need to do, I'll need to associate a custom CSS file to my uh, master page. So to do that, I'll go back to my uh, SharePoint designer and uh, I'm going to click all files here and uh, under style library, I'm going to open the style library and uh, create a new file called uh, of a type of a CSS and the file name will be custom CSS. So this custom CSS will hold my um, customizations to, uh, to uh, the master pages. Now I have the uh, CSS file. Now let's take a look at how we can link this CSS file to the master page. So uh, first things first, I can go right to the HTML file and add the link uh, uh, markup right here. But if you, if you don't remember the exact syntax of how to add the link, uh, you can actually use SharePoint Designer to insert it. I'm going to click on Style and then say Attach a Style Sheet and browse for my style sheet into the uh, style library and from there select my custom CSS and then click OK. And as you'll notice, if I scroll to the bottom of this section, you will see that we have a link attached to here and our custom CSS is right here. The path has been automatically adjusted to match the path of of how to correct how to correctly call this a CSS file. Okay, that's great. So I have a CSS file attached. Let's uh, now edit the file, and I'm going to add a piece of a, a pre-baked CSS that I have. So essentially, uh, since my sweet bar has been uh, broken down into three parts for me, uh, the little left side, uh, the gradient left side, the swoosh, and uh, and the right side. Since the left side has a bit of a swoosh the gradient for that side will have to uh, be different than the rest of the side. So let's take a look at uh, the CSS that I have here and uh, see how this will um, uh, manipulate all of those three images to be applied to the side. So I'm going to go back to my uh, SharePoint Designer, paste my CSS here, and um, in here, uh, let's just walk through some of the CSS elements. So first thing first, I'm going to add a custom background, uh, which is which is sized to a proper to the proper size that I want. And uh, since it's uh, my custom CSS um, lives in, uh, since my custom uh, uh, f image files are going to live in the same place as my uh, CSS, I'm going to reference them with this path, and I'm going to add the images shortly. 
Uh, next thing I'm gonna remove out of the box light blue color and uh, add the uh, the custom gradient to my to my side right here uh, next I'm gonna actually uh, anchor to inner sweet bar container which I'm gonna be adding in a moment and I'm gonna be provisioning the swoosh icon and the final uh, item is I'm gonna attach the right by right side of the sweet bar and uh, make some of the color modifications and add rounded corners so those are all the items that I'm gonna do I'm gonna save the CSS file and I'm gonna add my custom images to the style library. So I'm gonna uh, go back to the style library, pick my images from the desktop, and paste them over to the style library. Now it's um, it's a best practice to actually create folders for your uh, for your images in CSS. So in here I just dropped them right in the style library for the purposes of this demo. That'll work just fine. But keep in mind if you have more than just three files and you're doing it for production, you probably want to have uh, some sort of folders to be able to distinct one thing from another. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually uh, modify some of the things in my uh, uh, custom uh, master page and uh, to facilitate the anchoring to this inner sweet bar. So let's take a look at some of those uh, items that need to need to happen. First I'm going to search for the left part of the sweet bar and uh, it's represented by this particular uh, identifier. So we have in the sweet bar left, uh, we have um, uh, down below we have a diff that holds the actual sweet bar delegate and we're going to add uh, um, an identifier here that will represent our left part of the custom sweet bar. Next we're going to wrap the actual delegate here with a div that will wrap the rest of the sweet bar. So I'm going to create a new div and I'm going to create a class on it and the class will be our uh, inner sweet bar container class that we've defined here. And we've wrapped that. So now let's save this. And the final thing we need to do is uh, link uh, current uh, master page to, to be actually used um, on the site. So let's go back to master pages and then set our custom master to be used on the site. Okay, let's go back to our site again and hit refresh. And unfortunately, some of our images haven't loaded. What we could see is that CSS has been applied. And if we actually go to the and view the source of the page and search for our custom.css, we if we click on the on the CSS, uh, the CSS is actually here. So uh, everything has been resolved. But let's take a look at why some of those images don't apply. So I'm going to hit F12 and uh, click on the sweet bar right here and uh, try to navigate to my uh, sweet bar uh, BG. And when I hover over here under left sweet B, uh, BG, uh, my image doesn't really load. So that indicates um, that uh, the CSS cannot find the image. So I can try to, uh, try to find it right here. And if I put uh, two dots here, uh, basically indicating that uh, my in images are outside of the current directory, which is uh, the pages library, I can see that uh, things start to load right away. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my um, uh, SharePoint Designer CSS, and I'm going to apply that change right here. Uh, so this uh, happens quite often when uh, you are getting the design cutups from a design agency and when you're porting it over to your SharePoint, things don't really match just yet right away. So I'm going to go back here and uh, my CSS is saved. Let me see if I reload the site, if everything is uh, ready to go. And yes, it is. So I have my little uh, swoosh. Uh, here and I have the left gradient with uh, with two greens and I have the uh, uh, the rest of the left uh, sidebar with a, with a darker gradient and also my rounded corners uh, are on uh, buttons as well. So that's what's involved in modifying uh, custom or adding custom CSS uh, to a master page.